Hello everyone. Today we will continue with our TypeScript Fundamentals course where we're going to learn how to convert simple JavaScript web application into TypeScript. We will see how to initiate a project, how to configure a compiler, and how to run it in watch mode. So let's jump right in. So what we've got here is this simple application with index.html and app.js. All it's doing is producing this beautiful rainbow, which looks nothing like a real one, but it should be perfectly fine for our purpose. Let's go back to files and try to understand what is actually happening here. In index.html, we can see this little piece of CSS, which will make our rainbow look nice. This div with id rainbow is an element that we will be manipulating app.js contains all our JavaScript and what we have here is event listener that listens to DOM content loaded event and this event is handled by main function. So you would guess main function is located in app.js and here we are getting the element with the rainbow ID and we will be changing the style property border color to randomly generated color which is coming from this helper function generate color. So this is our starting point and the question is how we are going to bring in TypeScript into the picture. In previous video we have seen how to install TypeScript compiler and now it is a time to use it. So let's double check that we have it installed by typing tsc-v if you don't see the version, please go back to the previous video so you can install TypeScript compiler on your machine. So to initiate TypeScript project, all we're gonna have to do is type tsc dash dash init, press enter, and so what we see here is the message that tsconfig.json file was successfully created, and here it is. This config file provides options for TypeScript compiler that are specific to our project. As we can see, we have a few options that are already decided for us. We can, of course, change them later. The first one is so-called module resolution option, which is common JS in our case. We will come back to this one a little later in our course. This target option can also be interesting for us. Here we're specifying the version of JavaScript that we want our TypeScript to be transpiled to. There is a large number of options that are available for us which we can find in official documentation so the best way to get this one will be just to Google TypeScript compiler options and here we will see the complete list of options that are available to us. We should also remember that options in TS config file could be overwritten with options that we pass through TypeScript CLI as command line parameters. Let's go ahead and add few options to our TS config JSON file. The first one will be allow.js, which we will set to true. As you can see, we are getting that pop out that is trying to help us to pick up the right options. We will set it to true. What this option gives us, it will let us have plain JavaScript files as our source. And it is exactly what, what we need for our lesson here. The next one will be out there. With this option, we will specify the directory where we want to keep our files that were generated by TypeScript compiler. We will call it dist. It's the common name for such directory. Cool. Right now we are ready to run our compiler and let's see what happens when we run it. So in terminal all we have to do is type tsc and execute this command. So you can see on the left we got this new directory dist and we expect to have another app.js file in here. Cool, it is here. Let's open the original one and one that was generated for us. 
we will have our original file on the left and our generated file on the right. Let's split the screen, move this file here, close this one. Okay, so on the left we have the original file and on the right we have the generated one which looks pretty much the same, which is expected. The only difference that we can see that we don't have the space on the right between functions. Let's say if for some reason you forget to put semicolons and you have a lot of extra space. TypeScript compiler will take care of that also. Let's run the compiler again. As we can see, the file on the right, it has all semicolons and we don't see this extra space between functions. Okay, cool. So another thing that we have to do in order to make our application working, we will go into our index file and as we remember, we have this reference to our JavaScript file in index.html and we have to specify that now the file that we want to access is located in dest directory. So we will fix this. We'll save it and let's go to, to the browser and check if our application is still working. We'll refresh the page. We see the color is still getting changed and we are not getting any console errors here. So we are good. So let's do the few more final steps. As we have destination folder it would be a good idea also to have a source folder. So the source folder will move our original app.js file in there. Good. Let's double check if everything is working. We'll get terminal up again. We'll run compiler as we did before. Good, no errors, which means everything went well. Our application is working. There is one very useful feature of TypeScript compiler that we definitely should use, is so-called watch mode. We can enable it by typing dash w and right now our TypeScript compiler is running in watch mode. What it's doing for us, now every time we are changing file in our source folder, the compilation process will run automatically. And we can see this message here that compilation was completed and there was no problems. So what have we seen in this video? We initiated TypeScript project with tsc init command. We configured our compiler for our specific project with allow.js and outdoor TS config options. And we also have seen how files are actually getting compiled and how our, how our compiler can run in watch mode. So it is very convenient for us. So we don't have to do that manually all the time and it is run for us automatically. In the next video, we will get familiar with string and number types, and we will learn about aliases and union types. Please subscribe to get latest tutorials.